So the plant that we have with us today is what's known as Kunti. It is the only group of plant, it comes from a group of plants called cycads. It is the only cycad that is not only native to Florida, it's the only one that's native to North America. It has the green stems that come out. These particular little leaves or leaflets on here are very stiff. It's only found in sporadic parts throughout Florida, central, southern Florida, maybe some parts of northern Florida, and, and possibly a little bit into southeastern Georgia. It grows in relatively dry, higher, drier areas, so you'll find it in sandier areas. It is a plant that can grow anywhere from full sun to full shade. It's not typically going to be in areas that are very, very wet. Um, you can find this plant where we are right now uh, at Okehele Nature Center. Uh, we also have several of these lining the walkways at Green Cane Nature Center, uh, but we do have them in other areas of, our, of some of our other parks as well. And the cycads are classified, or some people call them living fossils. This is a group of plants that goes back approximately 325 million years. It's one of the oldest plants uh, that's still around today. So 325 million years ago, cycads were on the earth. And the kunti are still one of those cycads, or is, is, is an example of a cycad that's still here today. It is the larval source of a very unique butterfly here in South Florida, the Atala butterfly. The caterpillar of the Atala uh, is red, uh, two uh, rows of yellow dots down the back of the Atala caterpillar, and then uh, the butterfly itself is, is, a, is a small uh, blackish butterfly with a red abdomen and some little spots on it. And those cones, the, the seeds themselves, are sources of food for mockingbirds, uh, insects, uh, um, and, uh, and other animals that, that would eat that. The kunti itself was a source of food and still continues to be a source of food, a source of starch for uh, several uh, Native Americans like the Seminoles and the Miccosukees. Uh, that was a tr it's a tremendous source of, of starch uh, for making things such as bread, which uh, another name for this plant is Seminole bread. And so um, the Seminoles, the Miccosukees, uh, they would use this, take the rootstock out of the ground, and they would have to go through a process to get the toxins out of that rootstock. This plant was used so much for starch, um, even as early as 1825, by people that were coming down uh, um, to Fort Lauderdale in the Miami, in the Miami area. Uh, they found that this was a great source of starch. And by World War I, there were some factories or mills down there in the Miami area that were going through uh, 18 tons of kunti a day.